just let them youngins got at it, you know, get at it, man. He's over here right in the middle of the Chufa Patch. He ain't gonna hurt nothing, beating around. He can run through the woods, go pee on the tree. I don't care. I don't know if that was ISIS or not, son, but you safe. You're in Booger Bottom. Papa's over there. We got guns. I don't know what that was. One of the annual things that we do and enjoy doing is getting ready for turkey season. It's actually like like a huge deal. Like we enjoy getting ready, kind of scouting, but also burning. Control burn, that's a big way of life down here in the south. And uh, our habitat gets real thick. We got a lot of pines, a lot of sweet gum trees. And so in order to manage the habitat to make it better, we burn hot fires through there to kill out these sweet gums and these undesirable trees to take away from really these pine trees that are actually a crop. So we don't have bean and soybeans, but we have these pine trees. And so we uh, manage that. And sometimes these pine forests can get real thick and it really snuffs out a lot of habitat for these turkeys and even the deer to use. And so in some cases, the deer can use it for bedding, but we try to burn it in early spring. And that way it rejuvenates all this new growth and gives a lot of feed and just makes the woods better. It gives the, the trees a chance to not fight for the moisture that these other undesirable trees are. So it's a way of life and it actually helps the wildlife and uh, just kind of what we do. And so we look forward to it. And as soon as you burn, it can tell you, sometimes before the fire's out, them turkeys are out there scratching. So uh, we're gonna do that today. I even got my little helper over here. He's got his front end loader. He's about to load up now. You ready? Let's go, I'm gonna crank up. He'll come run it when I crank it. Coming? Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought you might. Whoa. I thought you might want to come. <laughs> All right. Whoa. It's going to be fun. All right. Let's go find Papa. So let's go burn some wood. Exactly. The wind's blowing nice too. I think it'd be a good day to run. Okay, well, we'll head that way. All right, well, come on. I'm, I'm headed on over towards, uh, towards the gate. I'm leaving. Now, you're, you're, you want to start over there and burn and then come back this way? We bought a well. We uh, wait, wait, what? You ask him what? Ask Papa if he's got the bull tractor. Look, I can put the yeah, we got a bulldozer. We got a big tractor. What tractor do you have, Waylon? As a dump truck. He's got his dump truck. But Waylon brought a dump truck if we need it. All right, we might need that dump truck. All right, he said it's in the back. So we'll be ready, Papa. All right. I'm going to head on over towards your dump. All right, we'll be right behind you. All right. Okay, I'm going to All right. Got his dump truck, and, and what's that? Backhoe. Backhoe? Man, you got your backhoe and dump truck. Well, we're gonna get some work done. All that's right. A, that's, that's a yeah, that's a big truck. Yeah, Papa truck. You ready to do some, do some burning? You gonna help Papa and Daddy? You gonna yes, help sir. us? You gonna help us today? Yes. All right, so we ready, Papa? All right, let's do it. I'm cranking. All right, here we go. We're finna go fly and then we're gonna burn, okay? Give me five. All right, let's do it. All right. Be careful, Papa. All right. Y'all seen some short segments on what we've done, at, you know, over the years in Bone Collector Real Tree Road Trips burning. This is the honey hole that we've always hunted, opening day. I don't know how many years. Ever since I've been 13 years old, I've hunted this area with my dad, opening day. But there's a lot goes into it. Even though we know this, you know, property like back of our hand, we take care of it, we control it. We plant chupa fields, we manage the wildlife, we got some food plots. And man, it's a lot more goes into these burns. But it's cool in Georgia, it's very legal. And you get permits and actually the uh, whole Georgia Forest Commission, they support landowners, you know, and leaseors that are trying to actually control and take care of the habitat for wildlife and the trees themselves. So uh, today we'll give you a little deeper look into it. Check this out. So here's a uh, what we call chufa. 
uh, you know, you can really plant it in a lot of different places, but in the south it's pretty popular for those of us who love to turkey hunt. It's the most natural food plot that you can, you know, actually plant that really attracts turkeys that you can hunt right over that's perfectly legal. And here's a, you plant this actually, like we'll plant our chufa typically in May, no later than June. So we'll plant it almost before turkey season goes out. And then it grows all year and the first frost kills it and it basically is like a nut grass and then so you're following turkey season like now here it is it's march we're two weeks away from turkey season and look these turkeys have found it and you can see they just dig it up deer hogs everything love this even little two-year-olds try to dig it up he's over there I'm digging. you digging it I'm and here's, digging. here's a good example you can kind of see a lot about it this is probably the last couple of days you can see where these turkeys have been scratching here that's obviously a hen you can see the track definitely a hen track Let's see if i can't find a gobbler yeah here's here's a gobbler see the difference look at this big gobbler track right in the middle of this trufa patch but you can see there's a lot of fresh sign all in here from from the last couple days all the way to to actually looks like pretty recent like some of this is pretty fresh but they've been in here a lot. Here's some pin feathers and stuff. So they get out here, a couple gobblers, you know, these hens start kind of getting in season. And these hens start coming around. And look, here's some hen droppings here. By rule, a hen dropping is more of a single, you know, turd. <laughs> like here, this is what I would consider hen dropping. Right here. I don't see any that jumps right at me. Here, now here's a gobbler. This would be... This would be a gobbler turd right here. Make a long, and a lot of times they'll have a J on them. So there's a lot of little things you can learn about turkeys that kind of let you know what you're getting into. There's no doubt in my mind this early in the season that there's probably, you know, a flock of hens, a gobbler or two out here. So it lets me know that they're breeding. So these gobblers are with the hens. So uh, no doubt a hen up turkey, because you can see there's hen and gobbler tracks and they're all about equal fresh signs. And another example of what we're burning, here's a good example. Papa's plowing a fire ditch around this, but look at all these briars. This is great nesting habitat, but it's not good for turkeys right now. So the beauty of burning it this early in March is we'll burn a hot fire through that and it'll kill all that and it'll be open. The floor canopy be something they can scratch in. Bugs, it, it, it kills a lot of bugs. So those old protein bugs, they'll eat on them. And then the new growth come back, something to feed on. And being that we're in Georgia, we have a warm climate, man, it grows back rapidly. So about April, some of these edges, it'll get back and it'll be thick enough that these turkeys can brood and they can also nest in and protect them from predators. But all this, our goal is to take all this out and have it open pines. The challenge with it, when you come over here you know, early season like Papa and I do every year. Well, obviously if you walk up in this country and you get all this burn, a turkey can see you for literally 30 acres. <laughs> so you are, you have to really approach it, but they love it, they're out here. And so just little small things you can do that don't cost a lot of money that you can really get this stuff really set set in they've a good way. Hit, they've been hitting this chufus all during the deer season. It's, they've been here yeah. the whole time. Yeah, we'd walk in, uh, from, come in right down there hunting, me and Lisa. And look, they'd be up in there everywhere. Scratch. Yeah, all in here, yeah. They'd be yeah. 25 or 30. They'd just walk off. We'd walk across down there and go back over to that redneck blind right down in there. And, uh, yeah, they'd be up in here. You see, yeah. they, they own it. They and, wearing it out. You Some of this fresh, they was in here last night. Oh, yeah. This, this, uh, and some of this cheap said rotted, but all this what's here is volunteer. He come back. And they come back. Yeah, it came back. Yeah, so it's I was looking over double here. crop. I was looking right here too. This is kind of cool. What I like about the chufa patches, and then obviously here's another hen track. You see that? That's a good. You can see that hen track good right there. That's a big old hen. A lot of people call that a gobbler, but that's just a big old fat hen. And look at all the fresh scratching over here. A lot of these pines. I'm on. I'm gonna go back this way, Michael. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go all the way around this perimeter. But we'll start back over there. Okay, south. Uh, southwest will be this way, so we will start back on that side. Let it burn. Let it burn, yeah. burn towards the wind. And then we'll come back on this side, like let it burn okay. hot through there. Cause but it... I gotta make one more pass over there. We'll be ready. Right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna run on around this edge. And okay. When I come back to here, we'll be ready to start over. Okay. There. I'm gonna double plow that side. All right. I'll be back in a minute.
But look at all this scratching right here by this chufa. So ain't no doubt. I mean, this is set up perfect. This is everybody, if you're a turkey hunter, this would be your dream. Turkeys are in here, we're gonna burn this. We're still two weeks out. So there's no reason these turkeys should go anywhere. We should be sitting in a catbird seat. And once again, I'm, I'm 30, I'm 45, so I've been hunting since I was 14. So you're talking 30, 36 something years. Yeah, over 30 something years, me and my dad have been hunting every day, opening Saturday of Georgia season. And uh, to have a relationship like that with anybody, especially your dad, that's important. And me and that old man right there have had a lot of fun over the years figuring out where to hunt. And my passion part has led me to what I'm doing now at Long Collector and really what I do in the hunting industry. So people say in America, you can't take something as a hobby and make a living out of it. You're wrong. I mean, we have a lot of passion for this and we love it. And there's never been anybody that I've ever took here, whether it be one of my kids, you know, my wife, when I take them here and we hunt this, it becomes contagious. We usually come in the morning, we'll hunt, chase turkeys, then we go overeat and get a big old southern breakfast and then a big old southern lunch. Mess around, sometimes we hunt the afternoon, sometimes we don't, but open the weekend is a family affair that has become a tradition at the Waddell household and it means so much to me. And it's all just something the good Lord gave us this renewable resource to hunt and celebrate with our family and friends. And so for me, it ain't about having to shoot one, but Lord, when you do all this work and you put things together and you can come over here and get one on video and it all comes together, it's just, I can't even explain it. And those of who you who are watching this that kind of have similar experiences and, and your passion for hunting in general, you understand what I'm saying, but you know, a lot of antis don't understand the heart and soul of the outdoorsman and the hunter. But for me, me and my relationship I got with that man right there, my dad and my kids and my family, and my friends, it means it means a lot. And so uh, I just hope, hopefully I can share this and you understand the, the vibe and the feeling. It's just a fun deal, man. It's just fun. Don't dig up all our chufa. You scratching around? You putting it in your dump truck? Yeah. Darn. That's another thing I learned as a dad. You know, I, I remember, man, I used to hard charge and, man, you you know, you're in the woods, you're being quiet and bump, bumping around, even deer hunting. But I've learned, I just let them youngins got at it, you know, get at it, man. He's over here right in the middle of the Chufa Patch. He ain't gonna hurt nothing, beating around. He can run through the woods, go pee on the tree. I don't, care. I don't know if that was ISIS or not, son, but you safe, you're in Booger Bottom. Papa's over there, we got guns. I don't know what that was. Did you hear it? Was it a bomb? Spaceship? What was it? A spaceship. What was it? A spaceship is scary. It is scary. I agree. Spaceships are scary. We took them to the monster jams. They had some robo thing come up there. He said, said Daddy, the spaceships are scary. You think that was the spaceships from the monster truck? He's up there over there. You think they scouting for turkeys too? 99% of the time, if you was in a big city, you'd be terrified. But way out in the middle here in Booger Bottom, that's probably some old redneck that got off early on Friday. He got him a case of Natty Lights and a big box of Tannerite and a 308. Nobody will call the law on what you just heard, I can promise you. Not where we're at. That's the fact, right?